And now, the man you are about to meet is the talk show host who talks faster than any guest. No one else so popular knows so much about popular culture, yet he conveys it all with no hint of condescension and only the slightest hint of a speech impediment. From the top plateau of his hairstyle to the scintillating soles of his Gucci loafers, he's so up to date he's coming back from tomorrow with a message for today. Who am I talking about? What am I talking about? Let's see what the world looks like this week to Jonathan Ross. Jonathan, there's mucho news. Were you, were you fascinated by this story, this one here, about uh, the vampire fanatic from Derbyshire, and she changed her name to Dracul? The, the Dracul family, Dracul. I believe they are now, yeah. I don't think I'd want to live next door to them, but I'm all for it. I think it's uh, far better than naming your child after a whole football team, as people tend to do, because with the number of transfers these days, I imagine it must be hard to keep up to date and <laughs> you go ahead and shift the name. But um, naming children is, it's a terribly difficult thing. It's an, I, have, I have two kids, and it was a, a long, hard decision process there. You can get books these days, of course. They're a new age. Name your baby in the new age way books. And they have names like Spirit and, and Free Soul and Break Wind and stuff like that. <laughs> and one of the very popular things I suggest you do is actually use an acronym where you take the letters of a phrase that you think represents the child to you and, and you name the child. A very popular one, I believe, is Taomi, which stands for the apple of my eye, which is quite sweet. The apple, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. We almost named one of my children Boib because my wife would, uh, was asking me again and again, we need a name, we need a name, I was in a bad mood, so I, I kept saying, bugger off, I'm busy, and that's <laughs> what the kid wound up with. Could have been worse, could have been foib, of course, but we can't say that. <laughs> um, but I mean, naming the name, it's just, it's just a, a horrendous decision-making process that you have to go through. There's been a survey, it was in some of the papers, uh, that uh, fathers would rather go to the dentist than to change a nappy. Uh, which would you rather do? I, I'm, I, I'm very hands-on. I don't have any problem with nappies whatsoever. I don't particularly like the dentist. I don't mind it. I think this is just... I can't understand this at all. I mean, I, and I have dealt with some nappies which would make grown men weep. There was... Um, <laughs> I remember one incident in particular, if I may name drop it. I was actually in, in America. I was filming an interview with Tom Jones. Ah. And I'd been to this Japanese restaurant with him. And I went back a week later uh, with my, my wife and my daughter. And, of course, they were... They were crawling all over us. They were really sucking up to us in a major way, which was fantastic. You know, we exploited it as fully as possible. They thought I'd be bringing Tom Jones in every other week. Little did they know. And um, my daughter had, uh, who was about two at the time, had taken a liking to the Japanese green tea ice cream they give you there. And unfortunately, when I went off to the toilet, I came back and she just had exploded. <laughs> and she had exploded. There'd been so much poo that something had come out of the front of her neck <laughs> and onto the table in front of us. Now... You know, this was like the Exxon Valdez of poo. This was, it was, it was a slick. They were, they were picking up herons and they were trying to clear it off their wings. It was like that. And, um, and of course they went nuts. This was in Beverly Hills. It was a very posh restaurant. And the guy came over and instead of doing what you'd think, you know, it's a bit of a shame, can we help? He came over and very dramatically, he swept everything up. The, the table got everything into a big, and yanked it off the table. And looked at me like that and walked off. And I thought, totally unnecessary. Unknowns to him though, I'd signed the credit card shit and that was in the poo. <laughs> So as we wandered off down the street, he then came out, Mr. Ross, Mr. Ross, you have not paid. I said, sir, I've paid, and I think you know exactly where to find it. <laughs> it very, very important news about the Queen this week is that she had a chance to see the Cub Scouts at work. Now, were you ever a Cub in your time? I never was a Cub Scout. I was a member of a far cooler group. I was um, a member what, of what the... Group? Co co cooler? <laughs> cool. I was a member of a far hipper group, Clive. Oh, um, right. I, I, I yeah. thought there was a group <laughs> called Far Cooler. You mean... <laughs> I, well, Far Cooler too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Got it. No, no, I was a member, I was never a member of the Cubs. I was a member of a group called the Imps, who yeah. were like um, the junior boys brigade. You know the Cubs were the scouts before they grew up and, and before things dropped and their voice changed. The Imps were the equivalent of the boys brigade. But um, the Imps had a much better outfit than the, than the Cubs. Um, the Cubs, I always thought, were a little bit neo-Nazi for my taste. I was a Cub, but yes, and I was a neo-Nazi. That's true. <laughs> yeah. But you're quite wrong about, uh, about uh, Cubs uh, graduating to the scouts after their voice changed. I mean, I was the oldest Cub in Australia. I never made it into the scouts. <laughs> you, how old were you? when you were still a cub. Well, I was finally got thrown out of the cubs when I was 28, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we used to go dib, 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 and dob, dob, dob. You didn't do that in the imps, did you? No, especially not when we were 28, no. Um, <laughs> no, we didn't. I mean, the imps were just a very cool bunch of people. We just used to hang out. We had, um, we were sort of casual. The, the uniform for the imps was a pair of shorts and a sweatshirt. That's that it? was it. And I was captain of the yellow team, which I still think is probably my finest achievement to date, and I'm sure many people would agree. Um, and, and all you got to show you were captain was a little badge of primary colour yellow, which was very, very impressive. The Cubs I'm, I'm a bit concerned about. I don't think, you know, I don't quite get it, to be honest with you. They, 
spent all that time hanging out. You know, they, they put up tents, they rub sticks together. I've never quite got to the bottom of it. I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know whether it should be allowed, frankly. <laughs> I think the whole movement has been usefully defined as a, as a gang of boys dressed like jerks following a jerk dressed like a boy. <laughs> you know, didn't we try and stamp this kind of thing out? I mean, not that... <laughs> there seem to be a there seem to be some truly truly interesting pizza stories around this week. Right? Absolutely, a very good week for pizza stories. One in particular, there was a guy who was arrested for delivering pizza and running, I believe, a drug delivery service on the side. You'd get along the side your regular um, toppings of you know pineapple and uh, mozzarella and all that, he also would put cannabis leaves on it so people could then <laughs> scrape off and smoke, which I'm not a drug user myself. Uh, I had no idea what this stuff would do to you. Um, met some young people once, they look quite giddy on it. Um, <laughs> but, and I think it's a fine idea, I don't have a problem with it, but can you imagine though if the order's got mixed up and you get some poor old lady above a flat of young folks gets the pizza? The hash pizza. She's sitting there and suddenly you hear rave music blaring out and she's running up and down like that. And then you've got six kids sitting downstairs going, this isn't working, give me another slice. <laughs> Well, di DIY was a big uh, story this week, which it really is. Uh, DIY B&Q. Oh, B&Q. Yeah. The f poor fella sacked from B&Q for not joining in their morning aerobic sessions. Which is now compulsory. If, you, if you're a B&Q uh, salesperson, you have to do aerobics so that you're fit to sell people DIY gears, right? This is... Uh, well, I, I do sympathise <laughs> with the poor fella because I know this, this is quite a big thing in Japan, I believe, where they get together in the morning in Sony or some big company and they chant the equivalent of, we are the best, we are world beaters. Uh, watch out England, we're coming to take over, we will want your women in jobs, or something. I don't know. <laughs> something along those lines, I've no idea. It's never been translated for me. But anyway, it's a good thing, it's a bonding thing. It, but, you know, it sort of works in foreign countries. It's the kind of thing that we just don't do well in this country. It's 7.30, it's raining outside, you're in Luton. You don't want to jump up and down and say, B and Q, we're the best. Especially when <laughs> B and Q obviously aren't the best. <laughs> you know, I'm no disrespect to them, I'm sure they're a fine place, but, you know, you're not world beaters, are you? It's B and Q. <laughs> you go in there for a bag of nails and a four by two. You don't go in there for, like, you know, the best. Jonathan. Uh, reading the news with you, one sees beneath. Thank you very much, Jonathan <laughs> Ross.